Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from Quarternight.com and today is Thursday the 5th of November and today I want to talk about the question of 19 which was first um, brought up by Rashad Khalifa. As I say, it's the 5th of November, so if you hear bangs going off around the place, I um, haven't moved to a, a war zone, it's just fireworks day going on around me. So, for people who are non-Muslim or don't have an Islamic background or don't know the Quran or simply don't care or haven't come across this information before, what am I talking about? The number 19. There was a, an Egyptian Muslim called Rashad Khalifa from obviously from Egypt who emigrated to America and he was, I believe he was a chemist, he was had a scientific background anyway. And in, if my memory serves correctly, in the 80s he came up with an idea based around the number 19 which does occur in the Quran, so far as I know it occurs once, and it occurs in Surah 74 verse 30 and a sister who is kind enough to listen to some of my presentations asked me what I thought about this question so I'm going to try to answer and give my give my view on it again as a bit of background for people who don't perhaps know what uh, Khalifa uh, did he entered all of the letters of the Quran into a computer and came to the conclusion based on this verse or perhaps this verse was what stimulated his his direction of of investigation that the number 19 is of a high significance and has an a high incidence in the quran now first point i'm not a mathematician so i haven't verified his claims uh, the second point is is that in my reading of the quran quite frankly i don't know what the number 19 refers to I don't know and I would be talking out of my hat to pretend that I do know I don't I know that I don't know what it means the next point is is that I would say um, regarding uh, Khalifa and his his claims and the people who follow his work I have no problem with any of it M my theology is very simple the baseline is, 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 is even simpler. The, the Quran says that those who, who believe in God and the last day and do righteous works have their reward. And I believe that. And if Rashad Khalifa did that, then he has his reward and I'm glad for him. And if his followers do that, they have their reward and I'm glad for them. That's really it for me. I don't make the distinction uh, along sectarian lines. You know, this is a Muslim, this isn't a Muslim. I'm, as far as I'm concerned, someone could n have never read the Quran in their whole life <laughs> or any holy book in their life. Not the, the Christian Bible, not the Jewish Bible or any other scripture. If they fear God, they believe in God and the last day, and they do good good works as far as i'm concerned they have their reward that's it and that applies to um, rashad khalifa as much as it applies to any other person in who's ever been born so i don't have a doctrinal problem with it i don't think it matters hugely i don't have uh, a deep set kind of like position on it what I like very much about what Khalifa did was the fact that he investigated using his mind and that surely is what the Quran calls us to do it's what I've done and I am not in a position to verify all his findings I can say that it, to me personally this is a personal point of view I don't know how useful it is to me personally uh, the, the numerical values behind the Quran to me the Quran is a, is a book of guidance and if I was to take a map as an analogy and I think it's a fair one then to me I'm more interested in the terrain and the direction than I am in the, the sort of you know how many meters this is off, off from sea level and that is from sea level but that's because of the kind of person that I am. I, I'm a person. I'm interested in words and in and in 
etymology and m sense and and so on i'm i'm not the bean countery sort of person that a lot of mathematicians are making a huge generalization here but that a lot of mathematicians in my experience have been but that doesn't mean that i don't value their their work it just doesn't do a lot for me personally now i will give you my understanding of this part of the Quran and as I say it's it's surah number 74 and in my own reading of it I, I disagree with his in, with Khalifa's and in fact the the, the generality of traditionalists uh, interpretations of of this section of this surah and I can explain why I do in order to discuss the surah it's worth reading the surah in full because what the surah is actually talking about it's talking about those people who are indifferent or or complacent as regards the day of judgment that to to my mind is is the obvious reading and the obvious subject of the of of, of the majority of the uh, of the surah and and the consequences for such people i will read the surah through and then discuss this part in in question this translation is my own translation of the Quran, a complete revelation, which you can download for free. Uh, Two thousand pages of uh, it's actually in excess of four hundred thirty thousand words, including all the notes and the and the appendix. And as I say, you can download it for nothing using the the button in the top right hand corner. As a word of introduction, my translation is based on a very specific methodology, and some of the terms I translate differently than the norm. I don't have time here to explain why I do. I have very good reasons for translating these things in this way based generally on what I call Quranic definitions. That is, I have identified places in the Quran which define particular terms and having defined those terms and, and, and identified these places where the Quran I, um, does define these terms I apply these terms throughout so if you hear in one or two places that instead of for example rejectors or infidels as typically translated I, I use those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue there's a very specific reason for that and I don't have time to explain it in full now if you want to know why download my translation and read the first few pages and, and you'll know why so I'm going to stick to the, the, the subject in hand. So, Surah 74. In the name of God, the Almighty, the Merciful, O thou, covered one, arise thou and warn, and thy Lord magnify, and thy garments purify, and depart thou from defilement, and show thou not favour seeking gain, and unto thy Lord be thou patient, and when the trumpet is sounded, that, that day, will be a difficult day. For those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue, not easy. Leave thou me with him whom I created alone, and whom I gave ample wealth and children present, and made ease smooth for him. Then hopes he that I should add more. No, indeed. He was obstinate toward our proofs. I will burden him with a steep ascent. He considered and determined. Damned be how he determined. Then damned be how he determined. Then looked and then frowned and scowled. Then turned away and was proud and said, This is only sorcery handed down. This is only the speech of a mortal. We will burn him in Saqqar. And what will convey to thee what Saqqar is? It spares not and leaves not. It makes visible to mortal man. Over it are nineteen. And we made the companions of the fire only as angels. And we made their number only as a means of denial for those who are indifferent to warning, that those in possession of the law might be certain, and those who heed warning might increase in faith, 
and those in possession of the law and the believers might not doubt. And that those in whose hearts is disease and those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue might say, What means God by this example? Thus God sends astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills. And there knows the forces of thy Lord only he. And this is only a reminder to mortal man. No, indeed, by the moon and the night when it retreats, and the morning when it glows, this is one of the greatest, as a warning to men, unto him who wills among you to advance or to tarry. Every soul is in pledge for what it earns, save the companions of the right hand, in gardens exchanging questions with the evildoers. What brought you into Sakhar? They will say, We have not been among the performers of duty, nor have we fed the needy, and we jested with those who jest, and repudiated the day of judgment, until the certainty came to us. And no benefit to them is the intercession of intercessors. Then what ails them that they turn away from the reminder, as if they were frightened donkeys fleeing a lion? The truth is, every man among them desires that he be given writings unfolded. No, indeed. The truth is, they fear not the hereafter. No, indeed. It is a reminder. Whoso wills will remember it and they will remember only as God wills. He is worthy of prudent fear and worthy to forgive. So that's the surah in its entirety. The subject, surely, is the complacency of men who choose not to remember God. I mean, the, 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 the opening really turns on the pivot he was obstinate toward our proofs. He considered and determined, and then he turned away and frowned. It's all too much trouble to him. He thinks this is nothing, and he says, um, this is only sorcery handed down. This is only the speech of a mortal. This is a man. He has his life. He's in his life, and he's being confronted with the Quran, with, with, with revelation, with warning about the life to come and he's oh well, you know this is just not worth my time it's some sort of you know some sort of legend verse 26 we will burn him in saqqar there are consequences now to his self aggrandizement and you know complacency and you know, he doesn't realize that every day how vital each day is for him each day a man wastes when he doesn't remember his maker, when he hasn't made a decision regarding the Almighty. He thinks, the man thinks he has time. So, 26, we will burn him in Saqqar. 27, and what will convey to thee what Saqqar is? Well, 28, we have the definition now, the Quranic definition of Saqqar. It spares not and leaves not. 29. It makes visible to mortal man. So whatever saqqar is, that's what it is. Over it are 19. Now what 19 means specifically, I don't know. I would imagine that it's 19 more <laughs> saqqars, things which spare not, leave not, and make visible to mortal man. That would be my best guess. Okay? 31. Now this really is the pivotal verse which we need to unpack. And we made the companions of the fire only as angels. Now, many people would render this, and we made the companions of the fire only angels. The Arabic grammar allows the, it, it, it to be as angels or angels as a direct object. There are cases throughout the Quran where both happen in many cases. The reason why I have decided on as angels there is a reason for this, and the reason why I don't believe that the companions of the fire can be angels is, is this. 
The expression companions of the fire occurs 21 times in the Quran. In Arabic it's Ashab um, nur So the companions of the fire occur, as I say, 21 times. And I'll just quickly rattle them off. It's at 239, 281, 2217, 2257, 2276, 3116, 529, 736, 744, 747, 750, 1027, 135, 2251, 398, 46, 4043, 58, 17, 59, 20, 64, 10, and 74, 31. And in all cases, outside the one here at 74, 31, unquestionably, all references to companions of the fire treat of those unfortunate people who are to suffer in hell. Now, my methodology is, is such that in the absence of explicit, incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, wherever there is a set proven case, I take that to be the case in all cases. So to, to come to this one instance at, third, at 7431 and say in this case, Companions of the Fire references angels I don't buy that when in provably in 20 other cases in fact in all the other 20 cases and the traditionalist agrees with this as well the companions of the fire indicate those people who are to burn in the fire so I have to accept that what this being said here is and we made the companions of the fire only as angels i.e. immortal so that's my understanding of the first clause the second clause and we made their number only as a means of denial for those who are indifferent to warning so now what we're talking about and this is the part of the crux which is that it references the word number so what Rashad Khalifa has done is said that what he thinks is happening here is he thinks that this number refers to the companions of the fire which he thinks are angels and he thinks that the number that it's talking about is 19 and and he sort of extrapolates from this you know, a whole sort of mathematical theology which i haven't verified and can't comment on i don't know how tight an argument it is i kn i do know that he had to uh, remove two verses from his corpus in order to make the numbers fit I, I think if you you've come to that sort of level, then really perhaps you should start questioning whether you're you know going along the right track. Also, again, as a, a non mathematician, I, I have heard from various people and supporters that you know he makes claims that the number of verses in the Quran and dividing this by nineteen. Well, this is this is foolishness because the number of the verses in the Quran was only fixed later on, and the way of dividing verses is is is, is not ag agreed upon by everyone um i mean the text is agreed upon but the where the, the verse divisions come and where the numberings come you know this is something which was worked out over time so i i struggle really to to, to get enthusiastic about this kind of argument but but this is the argument that he made and as i say i have a different mentality a different mind my my brain works in a different way so I don't know, perhaps he's right, but it, it doesn't mean an awful lot to me. To go back to the verse, and we made their number only as a means of denial for those who are indifferent to warning. Now the word for number here is idda, and idda is, uh, it means number, but it can mean number in one of two ways. It can mean a cardinal number, 1, 2, 8, 12, 16, and that being the case, it's more than understandable why one might think that it refers to the number 19, since we've, we've just had the number 19. But the, the word also means number as in a number of days, a period of time. Um, idda is the number of days that you might wait um, after your husband died before getting married again. It's a waiting period. So it, it can mean a period of time. Now, my reading, and this is my reading of it, as I and the reason why I read the the whole surah through is that what this surah is treating of is is the life of man, 
in which he feels complacent and safe, but he's not. So, and we made their number. Now, what I'm saying is, and this is my, my reading, that their relates to companions of the fire. And the companions of the fire are not angels. The companions of the fire are humans who've gone to hell. And we made their number only as a means of denial for those who were indifferent to warning. My reading is, my understanding is, my opinion is, is that we made their number, i.e. the number of days that these people were to live, only as a means of denial for those who are indifferent to warning. The, the Quran talks right the way through of this thing called fitna, and I analysed every single instance of the word fitna and every single instance of the, of the, of the, the root where the verb occurs. And the fundamental and unifying meaning of this term is means of denial. And that is how I translate it throughout consistently as a, as a noun in every single case. It's something when you read the translations, they're not very clear on what fitna is. They, they move it around depending on what they want to achieve. But in my reading and in my understanding, a fitna is a means of denial of God. And God gives you, he gives you, he tries you once or twice every year tries you to see if you will deny and their number i.e. the number of the people who are who become the companions of the fire their number of days i.e. their span their lifespan whether how long they were going to live was made as a means of denial for those who are indifferent to warning Okay, so they're alive for a period of time, and that whole period of time served them as a means of denial for those who rejected. That those, to continue, that those in possession of the law might be certain. Now, why? Those in possession of the law, they've been given the law, they have the law, and that they might be certain. Why? They read the law, they become certain of the life to come, they do good works. So for them, that same span serves for them to become certain their number whereas the previous group their number of days was their means of denial to continue and those who heed warning or is translated by others those who believe might increase in faith again the same number you have a number of days it might be 10 years might be 50 years might be you know 98 years you don't know but that period serves you in a different way to continue and those in possession of the law and the believers might not doubt why because you have a period of life you grow in faith you do not doubt to continue and that those in whose hearts is disease and those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue or as others translate those who reject or deny might say what means God by this example so these people have their span of life in order not to understand because they are their understanding is clouded by God as borne out by what continues to continue thus God sends astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills thus Catholica, in this manner in this way thus this way God sends these people astray to continue and there knows the forces of thy Lord only he so how this works the back end of this system is known only by God and this is only a reminder to mortal man mortal man why mortal why because this is the point of the of the surah you are mortal you have a life you have you don't know what your number is but you have one and then it continues no indeed by the moon and the night when it retreats and the morning when it glows this is this is a this is a, a, an oath and this is one of the greatest, i.e. greatest oaths, as a warning to men unto him who wills among you to advance or to tarry. We have a choice. And I believe that this is dividing up humanity along its main fault lines, which are these types of people, all of whom have one thing in common, which is their idda, their number, which serves different purposes for different types of people. To go back to the number 19, which is at verse 30, what does it mean? I don't know. If you do, let me know. 
but I don't believe that the uh, Khalifa interpretation or the traditionalist interpretation of it, i.e. indicating 19 angels, makes any sense. As I say, just to repeat the reason why I don't accept that is because Companions of the Fire at 31 occurs 21 times and to to affix a different value for Companions of the Fire to say that these are now angels when in all other 20 instances where it occurs in the Quran it's quite clearly those people who are to suffer and burn in hell doesn't stack up for me. That's my understanding, that's my reasoning. I hope it's of some use and um, I'd like to thank the sister who gave me the question because I think it's a very interesting question. I hope I've answered the question to, to her satisfaction. That's all for now. If you're listening on YouTube, you can download my full translation of the Quran free using the button in the top right hand corner, where I must say you can find all these notes that I have just just uh, covered. I also encourage you to sign up for the Quranite Plus newsletter on the site to get occasional micro updates. Like if you like, comment if you have something to say and subscribe to get more each week and use the link in the drop down below to donate if you want to help me keep doing this. And remember, life is short, eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds. <laughs>